Hi, welcome back to Teller Sports. If you're new here, as usual, my name is Ryan, uh, and I am one of three brothers who's on the channel. Today, what I have in mind uh, is to discuss the principles of play, and hopefully, you'll find this video useful um, and also something to think about. The idea is uh, I've been thinking long and hard about how to you know how to break it down as a coach um, when it comes to the principles of play and what i've realized sometimes when we plan sessions for instance as a coach you end up you know you know what your team needs or the players uh, to improve um, but one thing that i found very useful is if you plan your sessions um, based around the the principles of play then it becomes a lot easier to uh, you know to be able to plan out what what is really needed um, if you at a grassroots level or lower levels then hopefully this will help steer you into that direction to be able to find the experience of planning a lot easier and then it, it also could help that you're not going around the houses um, you do get obviously really good coaches out there who's very good at organizing um, and also they know exactly what they want so for you to get to that point for all of us really is you know you've got to be able to what you have in your mind you've got to be able to put it you know on paper then from there you've got to be able to uh, express yourself and hopefully get your message uh, you know across um, now keep in mind as we all know not everyone learns the same okay just enjoying a nice cup of green tea um, not everyone learns the same and the idea is we've got to be able to make sure everyone come away from the sessions um, you know feeling challenged whether they're the most experienced you know, or the least experienced. So in a in a in a squad or in a in a rugby session, not just rugby but any sports really, you will find three types of players. Okay, um, the first one is the inexperienced player, who's not really been there before, um, but frightening. You know about what don't know what to expect. Um, so if you ask them how was the session, uh, they might turn around and say it was extremely difficult. It was very hard. It wasn't enjoyable. It was. It might be a little bit enjoyable, but it was very challenging. Then you get the middle one, who's um, they enjoy the working hard, uh, you know, interacting, and they're just confident. They just love it. But then you get the more experienced players, and this is the next one. The more experienced players, they might turn around and say, "Yeah, the session was fairly easy, or it wasn't that challenging. Um, we still got some work done, but yeah, you know, they they, they didn't get a lot out of it." So what I what I tend to do um, is to always think always think about the bigger picture um, of how to make sure that everyone is included. So the session is inclusive uh, and memorable. That's two things: inclusive, inclusiveness, and that it's memorable. W what ideas could you put together if you think about it? They can make the session, you know, for, it, for for the session to be memorable, and also the fact that they enjoy it so much that they keep coming back. And whether it's 70 mile an hour winds, um, minus five weather, you know, they they they'll keep coming back. Now I always say, if you have a minimum of 10 players, okay, uh, at at the community club, that's consistently training okay um that's that's a starting point you know you don't you're not always going to have everyone at training but if you have 10 players you can do some work um in the past i would really that would really get me down you know um if i had minimum players but my mindset i i i learned to be flexible a very long time ago to you know to learn to be patient not just with that, but with all things in life. We all go through a lot of trials 
um, but it's to develop us you know if you walk away from that I say I take it like this you walk away from your development so you've got a choice you know you're either gonna face it and walk through the fire and learn and come through it embrace it and then you'll be better equipped to deal with it in the future okay now the 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 point i wanted to make was you know i really wanted to focus on the principles of play and how you could utilize that in your life now last night i went on instagram live and i had a quick chat about it but i thought i'm gonna put this out there on youtube and hopefully it's something that we could develop so if this video is for you please share it if you find it useful um principles of play as we all know everyone knows the principles right but except for the players so why am i saying that challenge your players right challenge your players next time and see or if you're a player challenge the coach challenge each other in the environment friendly okay friendly way do you know the principles of play um because if you do then the game becomes a lot more uh, easier to understand and obviously to, to, to understand the next play or the next role uh, of what needs to take place um, you know if you break it down but uh, the first one obviously the first the first principle of, of play is, uh, is contesting for possession so we all a lot even as young as six seven eight years old sometimes children would know that which is brilliant because then you can do more you can end up doing a lot more the younger they are but I would say teach them when they're young um, about it because like I said it becomes a lot more easier to work with with the players but if they've missed out on it then especially even if they're adults it's a uh, it's very difficult if they don't know it um, you'll struggle but then you're gonna have to be patient so here is the first thing contesting for possession right that's the first one then you could ask okay give me an example what how, how and where would that happen um they might end up saying at a line out which is that's obviously correct or scrum or you know or ruck even contesting for possession um that's brilliant if they could come up if they have that understanding obviously if they can say it like that the second one would be once you've contesting for possession you get the ball uh, everyone gets excited and then you have to end up doing what going forward okay why is it that people end up going sideways as soon as there's a turnover you know a lot of coaches out there they'll be like, give us two two or three passes as soon as the ball is turned over okay um, quickly two passes away from the from where there's more bodies okay where the threat was so move the ball into space which is right but here's the thing though why do they end up running sideways they should be going forwards teach them the principle the second principle of play is to go forwards another question question through questioning you know you can empower the players um, you know you don't have to give them all the answers just question them. good good questions okay they it helps them to think for themselves they can come up with the, the answers themselves and be creative as well um, so yeah what Give us an example of, you know, going forward. Uh, you could either pass the ball, you know, obviously backwards, but you can run forwards, you can kick it. You know, that's an option. So that's the second principle is to go forwards. The third principle of play is to have what? Support. That's correct. You have to have support. We all know that in rugby, it's a team game. And you know you have to have support uh, players. So it, to the minute you people always say, "Oh, don't run away from your support," but in reality, if you think about it, if you the ball carrier, how many times do we hear "Go left" or "Go right," past here, past there," which is not wrong, but to how can you make that better? How can you make how can you make that question be more effective? Here's the thing though, try this out. The ball carrier, let the ball carrier go where he wants to. He or she who's attacking, let them go where they wanna go. 
Which one feels better? You being told to go here or you choosing to go there because of what you see? Play with your eyes open, right? That's the idea. You want to play with your eyes open. Okay, so the idea is uh, provide support. So the ball always ends up where? On the straight line, back on the straight line. So if the, the support is behind you, slightly on the sides, wherever, they just letting you do your thing. I think that's more effective because you made that decision. Okay, you heard there was support, but they didn't tell you where to go. You played with your eyes open and you're having a go. And that's what rugby is about. That's why it feels good. So the third one is to provide support. Okay, so once you're providing support, what's next? What are you trying to achieve? What it, think about it as, as, as a rugby player or as an attacking player, or even when you're defending, what are you, what are you trying to stop when you're defending? Think about it. And what are you trying to achieve when you're attacking? To create continuity, to keep that ball alive. Okay, that's exciting. That's what gets people off their seat when they're watching the game. But that's also, um, you know, it's interchangeable, obviously. And the reason why I'm saying that, it's, uh, it, it helps you to, you know, to be a lot more creative. How can you move that ball into space? But if you, if you know you've got support, you can make decisions a lot more quicker and with more confidence. Even if it doesn't come off, at least you've had a go. Next time it might come off. Okay, so, so the fourth one is to create continuity. Now, once that starts happening, okay, there's something happening on the defensive side. They start to scramble. The defense, you get them stifled, whatever systems they're using, that system will be then under pressure. Once you recognizing as a, an attacking player, you've got the opposition on the back foot. That's when you've got to get excited because you are creating continuity. Okay, so the fifth one, is what you should be recognizing and feeling and experiencing is pressure. That's how you apply pressure. Through those steps, what's automatically obviously happening is just you need to see as a coach that you get your message across based around the principles of play. That there's clarity and that the players understand the principle taking place so that they can know which one should be taking place after. Then that, that way the game is played with a different purpose. Now I'm hoping that I'm making sense when I'm talking about purpose, you know. Uh, if there's a good purpose, a good feeling behind it, when you do something, you do it with a lot more confidence and it's almost like it's natural and that's what you're after. Um, so the fifth one is applying pressure, okay? Whichever way that is, as long as you can recognize what you're doing as a, as a team, okay? And then the sixth principle, obviously, is you end up scoring. So you can always challenge them, what, how can we score? Scoring a try, scoring a drop goal, scoring a penalty even, you know, con you know conversion, scoring. But if you plan a session and you want the principles to take place within the adaptive game or conditioning game, you can always reward the players. You can bring in rewards that will mimic the same feeling as match behavior. Okay, you must, if you already here, subscribed and you're watching our videos, um, I've been making a lot of skill drills and, you know, which is good. And I always talk about behavior. And I know my, my younger brother, Sergio, he's been doing absolutely brilliant with uh, the heat sessions and, you know, German fitness. Um, because it goes hand in hand, right? So we we do that and combine it, condense it to be able to mimic that match behavior. So we always talk about if you go and do strength and conditioning, you can't go and, you know, and just do it, uh, you know, if you do a bench press, just your energy is different than when you're running and passing and tackling. It's got to have that same behavior. That's when you'll become world class, okay, if you keep at it. But uh, I hope that makes sense. I'll quickly run through. The first principle of play is to do what? Is to contest for possession. The second principle of play is to provide, sorry, to go forward. And the third principle of play is to provide support, right? So once you provide support, you have to create continuity. 
once you're creating continuity, that's how you apply pressure. And when you're applying pressure, you end up scoring. So that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, just a quick one. I know this, This I just wanted to make a short video clip, but this is already 15 minutes. I mean, there's so much information out there. Um, if you do find this useful, if you have any questions, please, uh, as usual, uh, just drop us a message in the comments below. Um, but please keep following and keep sharing. It really helps. I hope that you can, um, you know, reach out. Tell us what's your favorite drills as a coach or as a player, what you experience. So with that, I would like to say I hope you're safe where you are. Um, hopefully we'll see you next time. And um, we'll be doing lives maybe at some point again. Uh, sitting down, we can all collaborate. Um, yeah, but on that note, I hope you keep well and keep learning and keep sharing. Uh, see you next time.